Hi everyone, welcome back to RTS and welcome back to our photo series and up again today we're still talking about sorting photos because this is a huge task, if not the biggest task when it comes to our hobby other than organizing paper, <laughs> but that's fun fun, uh, it is sorting photos, okay? So in our first segment in a f uh, sorting photos we talked about everyday life, those random photos, how to establish a ready to scrap box so you're ready to go, and then in segment two, how do you handle a big trip because it's a little bit different thought process than when you're just dealing with a, a single page layout a double page layout of one little event you know one little topic okay trips is a huge beast okay so today we're going to talk about family okay what do how do we do the family photos okay and then we're also going to talk about leftovers because i think in my space right now i have more photos in my leftover section than anything else because i've been scrapbooking a long time and so i was looking at them the other day i'm like man i have a lot of leftovers and i thought well yeah you've been scrapbooking a long a long time so that would make sense okay so whether you have a small amount of photos or a large amount of photos it is all a blessing okay so don't think that you have to fit into one category where you have 85 photo boxes on your shelf or if you, and you only have three it doesn't matter everybody's life is different okay but I do say and I think everybody would agree the best way to have a photo is in hand and printed we all know that and we talked more about that in our downloading and saving photos okay and so continuously keep watching those videos and uh, just keep putting comments because we're going to keep talking about photos for a long time so let's talk about okay so we have a stack of photos we printed them and so we have everyday life going on we have a ready to scrap box we know what to do okay that's if you're running to, if you want to do a layout you just go to your ready to scrap box grab a pocket and you're good to go okay or if you want to work on your trip you grab your trip ready to scrap box you're ready to go but now let's talk about something else that is big in our life and that is the why we scrapbook that's our family okay so i have a ready to scrap box just for my family okay so now let's talk about that because each one of these uh, boxes are set up a little different. And with that being said, let me have a disclaimer. If you think that every photo I have is organized in, in a photo box, no. I have a basket in a bin that has just leftover photos from the last four or five months. I've just been throwing it in. So if you think I'm completely organized when it comes to this category, you are mistaken. <laughs> I have a hot mess uh, in one, you know, in a couple piles. Okay. So um, what I told myself is because I can get lost in photos and I will stay there for three months. Okay. So I told myself in 2019, my focus has to be on getting my layouts put away. So everything with my photos is taking a back seat till 2020. In 2020, I am going to focus heavily on printing more photos and organizing more photos and also to getting some family history uh, as far as photos and that type of thing getting that organized so you will see that in 2020 okay but for 2019 it has to be layouts i can't do it all and nor should we expect that we can do it all you know you have to do it in chunks okay so i just told myself yes you see a hot mess there it's okay it will get um it'll get addressed you know later on okay so let's talk about this family ready to scrap box okay and so what this is is this is basically and i just have one box and i want to talk about this now is that i have my boxes labeled with a number and what this simply means for me is that i have a just a cheat sheet just like i do my thickers and uh what else here yeah, my thickers and my stamps. Okay, I have these cheat sheets. I have a cheat sheet for my photo boxes and it lists what number one is, number two, number three. And that is just how I do it. So I don't have to, now you could label them family, but that's not enough for me. Okay, I want the actual uh, what's in that box. And so I just have a cheat sheet with my numbered photo boxes and what's in them. And it's just on a little card and it stays right in my little tray here on my desk. Easy reference, okay? I really can't show that because it has names and I try not to show all that because it's Sometimes I don't have permission to talk about certain people on my channel. Okay, so let's talk about what is in my family box, okay? So this is just, if you have five of sevens, this is where I keep some of my five of sevens, just my, my, my dad and one of my siblings. And so this is basically 
uh, photos that I have not scrapbooked. This is, I'm going to say this is childhood. This is family, okay? This is my parents and my siblings and things of that nature, okay? So what I do is in the front, I have about me, okay? So I have my name and then just random photos. And then when I was in high school, when I was in uh, my graduation, when I was in college, my reunions. This is me right here, okay? And so you have to have a place for that type of thing. I have not scrapbooked these yet. There's a lot of childhood uh, stories I haven't done yet, events. Uh, some I'm, sometimes I'm motivated to do it and sometimes I don't feel like it, okay? You have to be in a frame of mind to scrapbook. Is that not true? Okay, so this is the chunk of me. This is my uh, childhood and, you know, like high school days, graduation. I mean, honestly, <clears throat> when you're talking about graduation, and I can't show this because some, you know, I have permission to show some of this. You have a little stack here. Yeah, that's not, we take way more photos than that. Okay, so this is my chunk. So then I go right into uh, heritage photos, and you can see I have a very small chunk of heritage photos. Okay, and so then after that, I have a section that's just for. Um, uh, family photos where it's the group of all of us. And then I go into my parents, my dad, my mom, and then I have a tab for each one of my siblings, okay? Now, I have names on these tabs, but I had to remove them for filming purposes. So if you have a family of... Uh, six siblings. So you, if you want to, you could have just a label for your parents, put that in there, and then you could have a tab for each one of your siblings, okay, or your cousins or your aunts, what or whoever in your family is someone that you scrapbook a lot about or that you think you're going to, you know, you want to keep these photos, okay? Now, when will I ever get to these? Sometimes this comes out in load because there's a lot of story connections. And so I know I get asked a lot in load, where do I get these photos? It's just simply my photo boxes. I just have them set up. One's ready to scrap. One's trips and events. This one's family. I'm going to show you what I do with my leftovers, okay? These are not leftovers. These are things I just, I mean, there may be some in here, okay? Some of these may be leftovers because this is an individual box. This is for my dad, my mom and all my siblings and I even have one in the back that says extended family because you know there are just some people in your life that are family regardless <laughs> yes they might not be blood related but they're your family okay so you can set up your family box and I think everyone should have a family box because that's mainly why we scrapbook is because of our family okay and this is just a way to keep these uh, individual people categorized okay because say if i want to do my mom's birthday is coming up say if i want to do a page about her i just go to her category and some uh, is leftovers and some is things from our childhood her childhood i have it all mixed in i have from when she was young let me see if i can pull one okay when she was young to maybe a layout that was just a few years, a, a photo that was just a few years ago. So I do not have that differentiated. I don't have uh, when my mom was little, when she was a teenager, when she was in school, or when she was married. I don't have that. I just have one group, dad, one group, mom, all my siblings, okay? You can do for your aunts, your cousins, whoever, okay? And so I just have a tab for each person. Now for me personally, I have more categories, like my uh, college days, graduation, all reunions because I'm in charge I was in charge of all of my high school year reunions okay I passed that baton to somebody else okay and so I kept track of all that okay so that is my family ready to go box I mean it is labeled uh, with a number and it's ready to go and this is uh, like I said now some people may not want older photos and with newer photos but for me this was by simply by person. I don't care if it was from 1930 uh, to 1960 or a 1980. It didn't matter to me. I just wanted per person because that's how I scrapbook. Okay. So sometimes chronological doesn't fit in when you're storing photos. It just doesn't. Okay. Sometimes it's purely by person or by category. Okay. So that is my family ready to scrap box and this is ready to go. Okay. And then when I'm doing a layout, if I have, say I do a layout about my sister tomorrow and I have an extra photo, I'm just going to come to her tab and put that extra photo back in that category. Okay. Because that's where I would have got the photos probably. Okay. So it just helps, um, it helps you have this person ready to scrapbook. It gives you a placeholder for leftovers. And then it's also a great way to have uh, photos always ready when you want to do a story-based page. Okay? It's always right here. Just very, very fun. Okay? So that is my family ready to scrap box. Okay? So I'm going to go to my next one here. Okay? 
Now, the, my next one, well, let me look here. Okay, now this basically, uh, we're going to start talking about leftovers, okay? And so, I don't know if I just said this. I don't know. I've had to do this a couple of times. I have more leftovers than I do everything else. Okay. Um, yes, I think I did say that. Okay. So this is, um, we're going to start talking about leftovers. So for my ready to scrap box, leftovers is part of my ready to scrap concept in my space because I use these often um, because I do a lot of story based pages. I do a lot of connections and uh, the load event is great for that. I'll have that listed below. Okay. So this one is just basically life. Okay. So I have, I actually have one called everyday life. I have food. I have the holidays. I have summer, fall, winter, Christmas, all that type of thing. And this isn't, um, this isn't too full. So you can see I have tabs. Oh, no, let me talk about that. Yeah. Did you see in my family? I didn't have pockets. It was just a tab with their name because that's all I needed. Okay. And so the same way with these leftovers of this holiday and seasons and everyday life and food. And you may have a tab for your fur babies or your fur babies may go in your family box. It doesn't matter how you put that or um, whatever category you have in your life that you scrapbook, just make up a tab. <laughs> yeah. So for my leftovers, I do not have these grouped in pockets because this is not layout planning. This is photos. This is just simply photos. Okay. Because when I say, if I want to do, um, we got a load prompt, something about your favorite food. I could grab the section here of food and I could just make those apple dumplings. Yes. <laughs> One of the first things I, I knew how to make on my own apple dumplings. Okay. So I could grab this stack of food photos. These are just leftovers or random whatever. Okay. And that is the group they go into. So you could have a tab for whatever this is. I'm going to call this home life holidays. Okay. I have a number on it and that number one is on my cheat sheet. Okay. So you can see, I still have room to grow in that. That's fine with me. I think I just recently had to do this because I ran out of room in another box. Okay. So now let's talk about my own little family. Okay. You just saw my, my mom and my dad and my siblings and my extended family, aunts, uncles, cousins, all however that works. Okay. But now let's talk about your immediate family. Who's living in the home you're living in. Okay. That would include, you know, your spouse, um, your loved ones, your children, your fur babies, whoever's, uh, is your immediate family. Okay. So I have, of course, a special box for this because uh, yeah, this is what I just know to grab. Okay. So in this, and I had to take out some tabs because, you know, I try not to do names is that I simply have a category for us. And this is uh, photos. That's just, um, my little family of three. And then I have photos that is just, um, uh, me and my husband. And then I have a section that is just my husband and my little one. I have a section that's just me and my little one. So what I do is I have a immediate family box, just me and my little family of three. And I have, all, and these are all leftovers. Okay. All leftovers. <laughs> yes. Okay. And so that is what I do when, and when I do a page that came from my ready to scrap box, say we went to Ikea. Okay. And after I did my Ikea layout and uh, I had leftovers and one was me, uh, me and my little one. So it would come into this category right here of me and my little one. Okay. And it would go in that category in that group. Okay. And I do not have pockets. These are simply just leftover photos. Okay. This is where I draw a lot of photos from when I'm doing story based pages. Okay. Um, because sometimes when we take a photo, we're not taking that photo because of a layout. We're taking that photo because of the person or that day or the memory. Okay. So that's why I think it's important to keep leftovers. Okay. And it's amazing that sometimes I feel like I scrap more from my leftover box than my ready to scrap box, you know, of current events. Okay. Because I just love the family connections. I love home life and the stories that arrive from childhood. Uh, someone remembers something you're like, Oh yeah, I remember that. And then you find the photo to go with it. Okay. So you can create this immediate family box. Okay. Again, this is just leftovers. If this was current. Okay. Say if this was, um, new year's day of 2019, that new year's day would be in my ready to scrap. That's my current, uh, you know, current layout. 
box. Okay, if that makes sense. This is just leftovers. So for leftovers, they're simply just not in a box by year, which is exactly what I used to do. Back in the day when I had leftovers, I would just have the year 2018, they plopped in there, 2017, and they plopped in there. And then after a while, especially with the load event, the load event is what changed this for me, is that I wanted to do story connections well, I can't remember the year of things. So I started doing it by person and it has really worked for me, okay? You can still do it by year. There's nothing wrong with that because you can get some good month and review uh, pages by doing it that way. So, um, so this is basically by personality and person. This is not by year or place, okay? So then I just have them divvied up. And then of course I have one that is a group uh, just of my husband and one of just me. And then I keep these extra ones here in case um, these dividers. Okay. Now remember I talked about it in the first segment, I got tired of making dividers. <laughs> so what I would do is I would take four by six cards. I would take a tab punch and I would just glue them on there. Now I still have a purpose for these, but I don't use it in my ready to scrap box. Okay. I use those pockets because that is a grab and go ty type of layout. So do you see why this category just you know, it takes so much brain power because, okay, for your current photos, you want to be getting that ready for a layout, but then also, too, when you have big trips, you got to keep that separate, and then when you have leftovers, but you still can do story connections, it's like three separate entities of this photo storage. It's not a one size fits all. There's no wrong way. There's no right way. It's exactly how your brain thinks and how you want it. Okay. I'm just showing my process. Okay. So what I do is I have that ready to scrap box, those layouts that are ready to go when I want to do some fast scrapbooking. And then I have the trips, the events, the big things in life, and then my uh, family life. Okay. And this is, I'm starting, I have three boxes of leftovers. Yes. I actually, I think, no, yeah, I have three boxes of leftovers. Yes, okay. And this one's getting kind of full, okay? But I, I love this. I work from this. And, of course, you can see it's in the prettiest photo box I have. Yes, I just did that so it was grab easy to go and grab, okay? And, of course, who doesn't love that print? My Hobby Lobby. Yes, okay. So that is uh, leftovers. This is... Uh, layouts um photos from all the layouts i've done in the last 20 some years and whenever i'm done with leftovers because i get asked that a lot after i work on a two-page spread or a one-page spread what are you doing with those leftovers well if it's about my family you know what box it's going in if it has to do with me and my little one and my hubby it's going in this box okay and so that is that okay now i only have one little one so I can't imagine if there was four or five because whatever I show you would probably be duplicated by four or five, okay? Okay, so let's talk about another level of leftovers, okay? So I just said that I only have one little one. So what if you have more than one little one in your life, okay? And so you have a lot of leftovers. Say you have boxes and boxes of leftovers. And what I would say is maybe have a leftover box of for each of your children or your grandchildren. It depends on how many of this category you have. You may just need one leftover box of your grandchildren and you simply have a tab with each one of those grandchildren's name. Okay, you can simply do that, okay? Or uh, maybe you need one you have a lot of leftovers and you need a photo box for each one of your children each one of your grandchildren it depends on how many levels uh that you're going to need it depends on how many leftovers you have in this category for me i only have one little one and then you saw like for my husband and me where those leftovers go that goes in my uh, immediate family box okay so now for my little one, I only have one, but I have a lot of leftovers. So I have her leftovers in two boxes, okay? And so what I did was they're not by year because the year does not matter to me. It's the by the topic. So of course I have her birthdays, uh, her pictures of her bedroom when she was a teenager or preteen toddler baby. So it basically goes by ages and stages, okay? So that's how I did that, okay? And so you can see preteen. Look at that. That is a huge chunk of leftovers okay these are just leftovers from layouts i've done over the years and so i'm not going to get rid of these no i mean just i'm not going to get rid of these leftovers and this is where i get a lot of photos from okay so then the second box is simply a continuation of these categories okay it would be her friends when she was in dance school days college days and then just other things okay so that is what i have for leftovers okay so again 
the amount of boxes you're going to have for leftovers is going to depend on how many leftovers you have and how you want to separate it out. If you simply just want to go by year for leftovers and that works for you, that's exactly what you should do. Or if you want to do it, okay, this is my cousins, these are my aunts, these are my brothers, or these are my sisters, these are my grandchildren, you can just do a category for that uh, group of person, okay? I think I just spit. <laughs> sorry okay or in my case i have it specialized a little bit out for my little one that i have it in ages and stages okay just because that is how when i go to put these away or if i want to work on a page okay like i recently did a 444 series for baby and it helped that i could come to the section where it was just baby photos okay instead of having to go through two boxes of leftovers or maybe three or four years i just went to a category that said baby and pulled it out i mean just look yes baby okay absolutely just baby okay so that is the leftovers okay and again I want to reiterate this type of system is really going to depend on how you want to sort your photos okay and I just know over the years my brain had to go in basically three or four different categories when it came to sorting photos I needed a home for I'm ready to scrapbook let's get this pocket let's get going okay and then I needed a place for my big trips okay big events things where you just have stacks of photos I needed to keep that away from my everyday this is a one-page layout this is a two-page layout okay I had to keep that separate okay because that's massive okay and then I wanted to keep my childhood and my you know my siblings and parents I wanted to keep that box separate now I wanted to say you could see that my whole childhood and my heritage and my siblings you see how that fit in one box okay for a lot of people you would need more than one box I just don't have a lot of childhood photos okay I don't my parents didn't have a lot of childhood photos it's just that's just where people are different I know some people that have 20 to 30 boxes of childhood photos what a blessing okay I just don't have that okay so again this type of storing is going to be so different for so many people I do recommend photo boxes because it's the cheapest way to go okay and so then also too then it came to I wanted um what to do with my leftovers and you see again it's photo boxes they're not in pockets I don't have layouts planned they're just simply with a tab with a group of leftover photos according to how I want to access them okay if it's just me and my husband if it's just my husband if it's just my little one and then with my little one I have them separated out even further because that's just how I scrapbook okay but if you have more than one child you may not want to do this if you just have one child or if you have more than one child and you have leftovers you simply might just want to call it a uh, Johnny and then you might want to do it by year okay or you simply just have a tab for Johnny okay that's just sometimes you have to decide how you want that for yourself okay so that's all I have for today when it comes to sorting family life and then leftovers and I think in our next photo series, I think it's going to be talking about odd shaped photos, those bigger ones. That's what we're going to talk about. And then also too, I think we're going to touch on memorabilia because it's basically you can do that in the same system. Okay. So that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, please list below because I'm sure you may have a question that I didn't cover, or you may have an issue that I don't have an issue with. So please ask those questions. Someone will have the answer because I have the most awesome subscribers out there. Yes, I do. Okay. So that's all I have for today. Come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to do. Bye. Thank you.